Hey guys, Guardian News. Just a quick heads up on what uh, we're going through a uh, uh, grand solar minimum and uh, what that does to our atmosphere and what causes these great storms and anomalies. So um, here's a quick clip um, from Adapt 2030 or 2020. It was 2030, I think. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, makes a good point about what's going on with this mini ice age. Um, people are like, what ice age? You know, No, it's just the beginning of it. Um, but anyways, here, check this out. Yeah, look at that. It's crazy. or the southern hemisphere, it absolutely affects precipitation patterns. Indonesia, Australia is a nice example here. The galactic cosmic rays are going to increase 19% over this next solar cycle, meaning more rains. And we're starting to see absolute off the charts, California, snow water equivalent through yeah, the Sierra Nevada mountains. Just like so straight much up. That's going to be skiing all summer long. They've gone from record drought, water rationing to full dams in a single six month period. Looking back in history, you'll see a direct correlation of the Sacramento River increasing its flow with the onset of many ice ages. Now, we need to ask the question, can we predict the mini ice age onset? Answer is yes, it's beginning right now. As we progress through solar cycle 25 and 6, we're going to enter back into something, I believe, into a 1500 or 2000 year cooling period, something around 578 or 79 AD. Long story short, these arc storms and atmospheric compression events are going to be arriving early. There's some very strange atmospheric patterns locking in place systems currently. So Zarkova, Zarkov, and Shepard's work with the canceling waves on the sun that onset these grand solar minimums, I simply divided it out. The wider this wave gets, the more unsettled and more unstable our weather becomes. And all the instability and crazy weather patterns you've seen since 2015 is just those first two marks. That yellow asterisk is this year when it's going to start to come apart right in the middle of the summer. And wow, California Department of Water Resources, you are not going to have the time you think you do to repair this spillway. The wet season is going to arrive early and you're going to have dumps of rain in there in the middle of the summer that are unexpected. Welcome to the new grand solar minimum. And for the rest of you not in California, that shift from 2018 to 19 is where our world's weather literally comes unwound. These will be the first global crop losses. Your timeline for the instability and the reset button for society is shown in this chart right here. And speaking of the future of agriculture and how we're going to mitigate these crop losses, I encourage you to jump over to Mini Ice Age Conversations on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or SoundCloud for episode number 22 with Ted Marshalldon of Omega Gardens, the designer of the rotary hydroponic system and the farm dominium. This is definitely a crystal ball into the future of our agricultural revolution. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. Yeah. Earlier this year, the world was glued to the possible collapse of the Oroville Dam as the water spilled over the emergency spillway for the first time ever. The water level in the lake has risen 850 feet due to excessive melt off in the snowpack. So what the Department of Water Resources is doing is trying to lower the lake level by opening the spillway, 27,000 cubic feet. They're gonna let this go for several more days. And then they plan to shut this off and start emergency repairs on the spillway. I left links below so you can check out the Department of Water Resources and the Orville Dam levels. And for those of you looking for daily updates, I encourage you to jump over to Blanco Rio's YouTube channel. Using his piloting skills with his passion of bringing you reports, this is the best report on the net about the Oroville Dam for sure. I grabbed this still off the May 9th update. Now after they shut off the water, what they're planning to do is start the emergency repairs on the spillway, and try to get at least some of it ready for overspilling and letting out water during the next rainy season and across the west coast you see where i marked emergency spillway 
that's the area that overtopped for the first time ever and had so much erosion. Okay, I'm going to pause that real quick because um, I actually live in Oroville. And uh, the funny thing about that is you can't, it really can't see. Okay, this is the main spillway. Okay, it has gates and everything, obviously. You can see the where the water would go down right here. This is basically the emergency spillway. There's no gates. It just goes over because it's, it's a lower part of the dam itself. This is like the main part, and then it drops down probably 20 feet, and then it just spills over, which happened in February. And it was funny because it was on a Sunday, and, you know, they said, oh, yeah, it's going to come over. You know, finally, we're just going to let it go over, and everything's going to be good. No, that wasn't the, uh, the outcome at all. It started going over. Only at, um, oh, I think it was like 15, maybe 20,000 if that CFS is. That's cubic feet per second. And you can see all this. This is all shotcrete. But before it was just nothing but dirt, regular dirt. So it started eroding like right in there and then making its way back closer to the dam itself. And they didn't want that. So they called emergency evacuation. And that really sucked that day. I mean, it was like a an adventure on itself. We all bounced to Chico. I mean, it was crazy, man. Um, and then the funny thing is that, oh, everything's going to be okay. And then until shit hits the fan. So now we know I'm going to be really paying attention. I'm going to actually try to get videos myself and head up there. But they have like the main roads and stuff blocked off. So I would have to come all the way around this mountain. And, and back here, there's like a, a part where I can get up there. But as far as getting as close as you can, um it's hard but like he said yeah the blanco lirio channel dude's name is juan brown and this is actually him in his plane taking these shots and he he does he does a really good job on the shots and he has friends with dwr and a lot of the uh, state officials and whatnot so um so far that they're working on they've been working on it for the last month i want to say um Kiwit is, I think, the general contractor on this job and uh, whatnot. So let's see what else this dude has to say. Damage. They filled a lot of that in to let the water flow over. And what I wanted to say also is all these images I'm looking through, the way the Department of Water frames these shots is to make it look like humans and the dam are sort of semi-sized and it looks doable and easily repairable. All the shots where they show people, they show it in such a setting that, you know, the gaps are only 30 feet deep, 5 feet deep, 8 feet deep. Something that looks more manageable. Yeah, I want to stop that real, real quick right there, like what he was saying. This is by far a hard-ass job to do, okay? There's big ravines. It's like a damn canyon now. And from that part to the other part is a long ways. There's no way they're going to get this shit done. Um, they're, what All they could do is reinforce this as best as they can because obviously they're going to have to let out more water and they don't want erosion to come back. But what the good thing is is that this is all on solid bedrock. It is tied down. They're anchoring it down even more. There is rebar that was in the dam. But here's the thing. This all began right here because of cracks previously that weren't fixed right. The shit wasn't done right. So, um, anyways. Uh, but when you get down into the actual true size of this, it's nothing more than photo manipulation. The gargantuan task in front of them, first, it's going to take five or six years to get that thing rebuilt, not repaired. Secondly, they're planning on using this entire five months of dry period time to get these spillway band-aids in place. But you know what? My personal call is the early arrival of the wet season on the West Coast. This is absolutely going to hamper or delay the Orville Dam spillway. Get a degree in solving the problems that's stupid. Hamper or delay the Orville Dam spillway repairs. I want to show you why I think that way. 
And also, this is a grand solar minimum forecast for the rest of you out there. Now, the world's weather patterns are shifting. It's aware, everybody is aware now. It is in your face in every place on the continent, every country, everybody's understanding that there is strength. He makes a good point on a lot of this. Like, this is what's really going on. We're going into a mini ice age because of the sun is going dormant and it's called the grand solar minimum. Um, but the thing is, um, people are like, oh, but it's hotter. But no, it's because when the sun gets weaker, so does our shield, our world shield. So more UV rays are penetrable to go through, which causes um, cloud formation. Um, you see a lot of the planes doing chemtrails. That is like some type of reflectant i don't want to say aluminum i'm not sure chromium or something like that that they spray in the in the in the atmosphere as a reflectant so the rays get reflected which causes heat it, it's it just causes chaos and it's just shit that's in our environment shit that we breathe and it gets into our fucking ground and our soil and then we eat that shit you know it's just it's poison that's what it is because honestly if they didn't do that shit we'd probably still be pounded by rain you know, if harp didn't affect these waves that were coming from the other day, I don't know if you guys caught that story, but it was like, it was weird because there was like cloud formation all over here. Then down here, you see, here's California right there. And it was just like blank. And then you seen this like anomaly of these like ripples just kind of going up. It was weird, but that's on a different video. Um, but yeah, it, it's a trip. Let's see what he has to say. Let's go over here. Settled May pattern to bring north. This is just a few days ago. Yeah. Unsettled May brings showers. It's supposed to be going into the dry season. Accumulated precipitation. Another inch, inch and a half. All right, that was like last week. We had a little bit of rain, uh, mostly up in the in the mountains, though, in the foothills. Um, but now we're like in a well. From what I checked, the weather. We have a heat wave. We're going through a little bit of a heat wave. We got some dry weather for a while, but the shit changes all the time. You know, like they, you can really only predict the weather maybe five days out, seven days out at best, but it can change. So, but anyways, yeah, I mean, it's something to watch on the Orville Dam because it's it's a major, major travesty. It is. I mean that shit's got to be repaired right and you know of course they're going to tell the public oh yeah we got it under control because they don't want panic nobody wants panic panic's bad for business because shit gets robbed shit gets looted you know um but yeah i mean it sucked you know because when we left we came back fuck to have a had a utility trailer got stolen you know they cut the lock and they took it and i'm like fuck there's thousand dollars down the hole you know people are stupid like that so but anyways, I just figured I'd let you guys on on this video. This dude is Adapt2030. Check him out. He has some good points. I go give all the credit to this dude in his video, but it kind of related to me because it's like around where I live. But um, oh, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like. You know, I do produce a lot of good videos, and the videos that I take off of other people's, I give credit to. You know, I'm not making a dime off of this. I'm not going to monetize my video because this is dude's stuff, you know. But I thought it was really cool. He had some good points and graphs and stuff like that. So, well, thank you for.